Hey there, I came out to my shop to record the voiceover for my kitchen island build. But my neighbor is working with some machine over there and it's a little bit more noisy than I would like, so I'm gonna have to wait until this evening. So I thought I would make another video to try to piss off a few more people. And talk about subjective versus objective viewpoints or attitudes in audio. Like almost everything else these days, kind of been polarized you know there's extremes happening in the subjective camp and the objective camp but the reality is that most people I would say 99.9% .9 of people in the world are in the middle of course and Part of that is because audio is not very interesting to most people. Now, objective versus subjective, there's a possible way to be both. And I consider myself that. I am objective where some things are concerned and I am subjective where it makes sense to be subjective. And my subjectivity is based on how something actually sounds where I'm listening to it. And that is something, in my opinion, that cannot, and it's actually, my opinion is, is well informed too, because I've, you know, been involved with audio for quite a long time. And I've built a lot of speakers. I've, I've, you know, listened to a lot of stuff. I know my hearing is not great, but, that really doesn't make a difference as far as sound quality goes, your perception of it. So I said in my last video that measurements are mostly BS. And um, of course that triggered a few people. And of course there was a lot of misunderstanding with what I said. People don't fully listen to what you're saying. And especially in the case of the, you know, the videos that I post on this channel, I take extra time to put more detail thinking into the description of the video. And then I copy that and I post it as my first comment. And I pin that to the top so that a lot of people who actually want to hear what I have to say <laughs> can read that and get a deeper understanding. Because, like, I got to be honest, I'm not scripting these videos. I'm just coming out here like I am right now and talking off the top of my head. And sometimes you get things wrong. Sometimes you leave things out. And when I go in to edit it, I can sometimes correct things a little bit. But overall, the best way to take these videos is me talking and what I say in that comment. So yeah, you'll get the full picture there. So I said that measurements are mostly BS and that's the way that has everything to do with the way that they are being presented these days as if the measurements that come from you know these detailed scans are all you need to determine you know the sound quality of a pair of speakers and you know what for that 99 Point eight, whatever figure I quoted before that are in the middle, that's that's all they need. <laughs> that's more than they need actually, because a lot of people will settle for terrible sound. But if you want to go further, and that's I mean that's the goal for a serious audiophile, which I don't consider myself as an audiophile in this in the traditional sense, but I am very deeply interested in sound quality. If you want to go further, you have to look at other factors. You have to not only look at the speakers, look at the room. All right. And then, like I said, the other th wild card is your, your, your hearing. All right. Now I mentioned before, and I actually made a video about this, that my hearing is damaged. So I've taken steps to try to get it back to somewhere within reason with my struggles with the audiologist and I went over that in that video 
to get a pair of hearing aids that actually that I can actually live with. Now these are not 100%. Okay, they still make certain things, especially high frequency stuff, sound a little bit strange. But I know that. I know that. Like when I'm sitting there listening, it's not the speakers that's making that sound that I don't like. It's these things right here. So even though I can't really filter that out, I know it and it really doesn't bother me. Okay. And it's fairly minor as well. And that's another distinction between people these days. Well, it's probably always been the distinction, but I think common sense was a little bit more common many years ago when you didn't have access to all this trivial knowledge that's floating around these days is that people nitpick on the most insignificant things. They spend so much time picking holes and discussing stuff that is of negligible consequence and, and outright ignoring or glossing over or minimizing big issues like a room. Now I can give you a very, a very good example, all right? Now I'm recording this with this, but I'm also recording with the, the camera microphone. And you can hear the sound quality when I switch from one to the other. And you can compare that to what this shop sounded like before I did the root, the acoustic treatment that I did. The big acoustic treatment I did in here was to add a drop ceiling that has insulation above that acts as a big absorber and it improves the sound. Often I'm out on a job site and I uh, need a sharp drill bit and all of the ones I got are dull. So I've come up with a quick and easy way to sharpen them. Huge, massive improvement in the sound. So these are the things that people ignore. And they look at these measurements that say, okay, this is what it's going to sound like in the typical room. And they say, oh, good. We got good off axis. We got good directivity. We got good off axis response. We got flat, you know, frequency response. The fact is what those measurements are doing is they are, you could say, standardizing what you are getting. All right, manufacturers are going to sit up and notice that these videos, that these measurement videos are getting more views and they're going to respond by pulling all of their products into line with these that, you know, that that conform to these measurements so that they'll test well, so that they'll measure well. All right. And that's fine. <laughs> that's great for that 99.8% of the population that settles for mediocre. But if you want something better, if you want something that sounds good, you're not going to get it there. And I say that with absolute certainty because I've tried lots of different things in a room that has a lot of acoustic treatment. So I've taken as much as I possibly can at least well, within reason, anyway, I've taken that factor out of the equation, or at least I've brought it down to a point where it's not completely ruining what the speakers are putting out. I mentioned the ELAC bookshelf speakers that I had in the room while I was setting it up. And after the room was set up, I was actually using those speakers for quite a while while I developed the open baffle ones that I have now. And after, well, during, because I, I set up prototypes and mock-ups to test, I had, I was able to directly compare the two, the ELAC bookshelf speaker to the ones that I've made. And subjectively, the ones that I made without, you know, deceiving myself, sounded much better, much better than the ELACs, even when they were set up so that they weren't flat. They wouldn't measure flat. That was the biggest takeaway I got from that of the whole thing is that even when, okay, you go to great lengths to try to make it flat, 
and then you listen to it and then you take that away quickly and bang it all comes back it's way better sounding than the flat now for some people they may prefer that flat sound that even neutral sound other people myself included want a little bit more life in what i'm hearing and this is where your hearing preference comes in it's not only the hearing mechanism the brain ear connection it's what you prefer to, to hear all right so you can't take a standard measurement of a speaker where the goal is flat response and even off axis response and plug that into a situation where there's so much subjectivity involved there's so much personal preference involved and that's what i'm saying that's what i was saying you can't take that single metric and answer a much more complicated question with it okay it'll give you some guidelines and there's nothing wrong with that you know, people said well what's wrong with giving the people more data nothing wrong with getting more data as long as you know what to do with the data and it's presented in a way that says this is what they measure like and this situation is gonna suit 99.8 percent of the population they're gonna be happy with it they're gonna be ecstatic with it actually because they really don't care but if you want something more you're gonna have to you're gonna have to have to actually listen to it in your room that's what you're gonna have to do